I want to share with you um, something about identity, uh, where God has been working in my life and, and speaking to me, and uh, He's shown me in miraculous ways who I am in Him. And, uh, you know, the question of the day is, who does Jesus say that I am? And you're going to hear stuff that you know, and you're going to hear stuff that you um, are like, duh. Um, but the problem is, is that I think a lot of us sit there and uh, we know it, but we never act on it or never walk in these things, these truths, right? And so today I'm hoping to stir up a passion within us that says, hey, I'm going to walk in this today. I'm going to actually choose that, the things that he's talking about. The thing, and it's not things that I've made up. These are, this is scripture. So it's, um, if you've ever sat under my teaching, which I've preached here twice now, I think, I use a lot of scripture, and Ben, ben said, uh, Alex loves it when you do that, and uh, it's like, so Alex, get ready, because uh, I'm going to give you a lot, but uh, I've also got the references in your notes, so that that way, if you miss something, and you're focused, and you're listening, that's okay, but I've also lined it out, and they say, I am, or I something, I did that on purpose, we want to, uh, I want to, for you to have that, so that when the enemy comes and attacks, you can be reminded of who you are in Christ. And you can say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to believe that. Right? So, so that's, that's why I did what I did. Uh, it's on purpose. And so I, I want you to, to go with me on this journey. Sound good? Okay, so um, let me tell you a story. Uh, 2013, 2014, worst years of my life. Worst years of my family's life. It was the hardest thing ever. Um, all of us were uh, broken, torn down, uh, crushed. Uh, we had moved to Ca California. I went to Sacramento. I went to a big church, like 1,200 people. And uh, they had a traditional service, and they had a modern service, is what they called it. Um, this is basically our service. Um, so uh, I went, I led it, and it grew, and everybody t pat me on the back, telling me how great I was. And I believed him. And um, I was away from my family for a while because they had to come later. So I was out there by myself. So, you know, life was good, right? I'm just like this cool dude. What was I thinking? One. But, uh, I mean, look at, look at this. Whatever. Uh, you know, but anyway, the, the, the Lord um, used that time. He took it. Even though I ended up being at rock bottom, I left that, left that church. Um, it was not the right fit for me. It was not the right fit for our family. And uh, I was working other kinds of jobs and doing all kinds of things, just totally away from ministry. Um, I still love Jesus, but I was not right. And I needed to get right and get healthy. And he spoke clearly to me about who I was. And he said, you are my child because i was like at that point i was like okay i'm done that was it it was a good run 12 years many years before that but 12 years of on staff somewhere that's good we're done he said no you're not done you're my child i'm gonna mold you and make you into what i want you to be and so i thought okay so what can i i want to share about identity in christ because i had placed my identity in the things that I could do and the giftings and talents that I could do instead of who I was in him. And so um, he needed to shake me up and he needed to break me and he needed to humble me and he did and I'm so glad he did. And I, I stand before you now saying praise God. You know, it's one of the reasons I'm here uh, because he worked a miracle. Um, and you're like, huh, huh, okay. Didn't know that. Yeah, he didn't know that. But that's the cool thing about Jesus. He changes everything. And um, so I want to start at the top with, I'm a child of God. Okay? Because that's what we're called to be. Right? And this is real simple. This is our theme. We're a child of God. So here's the, here's the thing. If you don't know that, if you don't think you are, everything else I'm going to share with you, it doesn't matter. It's worthless to you. So if you're in this room today and this is your first time like stepping inside a church, awesome. 
you just found something totally different today and who knows what it'll look like next week but this week totally different and you were meant to be here today so welcome if you've been here a lot of times but you've just never really stepped over that line and said Jesus I need you yeah I surrender to you today's the day because you're going to hear some cool things that are from his word that tell you about who you are in Christ and it sure makes me sound and look a lot better than I am and it's not things that are just going to lift you up it's not things that are make you prideful it's going to make you boast in the Lord because you're going to rely on his strength not yours it's really awesome so you ready to go on the journey let's do it okay so so we know we're a child, but let's look at this verse. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So that's why I say you have to start here. You have to start here. So if you have believed and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved, right? And that's a term that we use in Christianity, saved. We are saved from death and brought into life. That's big time for us. Okay, so if you're new here, that's what we're dealing with right now. We believe that in, in sin, we are in death, but in Jesus, he raised us up to life once again. All right, so that's what we're talking about. There's eight things that I want to share with you today, and you're like, eight, can you do it? Yes, I can. I've done it once before, and we will do it again. The first one I want to say is, um, I have been made alive with Christ okay so we talked about death in in death we are what dead see it somebody out there is picking up on things in death we are dead okay when you're dead can you do anything no thank you so these are real simple I told you you're, you're not you're not going to come away with like something that that was awesome I've never heard that before no you've heard them before but a lot of us aren't applying them and we're going to apply them today okay that's the goal in Romans uh no sorry hang on I moved it in Ephesians 2 4 through 5 it says this but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. So he gave us Christ so that Christ could then raise us up from the dead so that we would be made alive in Christ. That's a simple one, right? Okay, that makes sense, correct? So we were once dead and now we are alive. Perfect. Next one. I've been brought near to God. I've been brought near to God by the blood of Christ. So his sacrifice was necessary. The blood is necessary for us because it had some, but something had to pay. We had to pay for our sin. And Jesus said, Father, if that's what you want, that's what I'll do. And the father said, yes, that is what I want. And so he sacrificed his son. And we all know that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We know that, John 3, 16. We know that. But there's more. Because we've been brought near to God by the blood of Christ. And, and, it, and it says this in Ephesians 2, 13. But now you have been united. This is a key word because this word is, is throughout a lot of scripture. We're in union. We're brought into communion with God. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. So his blood, what it did for us is it simply brought us near to the Father. It didn't keep us away. We were once far away because when you're dead, we, we couldn't do anything, right? But once we were made alive, he did not only just make us alive, which is great. To me, that's more than enough that we deserve because uh, we deserve death but what he did was is he said no through my blood I'm going to bring you near to me that's special that's really special because it's it's something that um, not everybody gets I mean we we don't there's there's powerful people in this world that will never get close to you right 
But we have the King of kings and Lord of lords that says, I'm bringing you in. I'm bringing you near to me. You were once far away, but because of Jesus, I'm bringing you to me. And so we become united with him. Third, I have boldness and confident access to God through faith in Christ. Okay? So, he makes the sacrifice. He conquers death. He says, I'm going to make, turn you from death to life. I'm going to also draw you near to me. And here's just another thing that I'm going to add on. You can come boldly and confidently into my presence. Let's look at this verse. Ephesians 3.12 It says, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. So when I'm standing up here and there's times when we're singing and I'm saying, oh, sing like you mean it. That kind of passion, he calls for. He loves. Church is, to me, is not to be this place where it's just come in and be quiet. Yeah, there's times for reference. I get that. I'm, I'm not saying that. But there are times when we're celebrating him. Celebrate him. Because he's given us permission to come boldly into his presence. Boldly and confidently. I don't doubt that I can run into my father's presence. I don't doubt that at all. I have zero doubt. And you obviously see me do it week in and week out. I'm not afraid of that. I don't care what you think. You know, you can think I'm weird. As, 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 uh, as, was, as David said, I'll become even more indignified than this to Michael, his wife, who was just absurd that he was out dancing in the streets. Yeah, I don't care. But the, the point is, he says I can come boldly. Think about it this way. My daughter can, right now, if she needed me badly, right now, could walk up here, I would turn my mic off, listen to what she had to say, and go on. Now, as I said in the first service, I would probably say, let's not do that again. But she could if she needed to. And she knows that. That's how we are with Jesus. How we are with the Father. We can come to him. Just as a child comes to his, to his papa. Right? I have little kids. I love little kids. Two-year-olds, for sure, are like my favorite age ever. Uh, connect with them. I think it's mental. I don't know. We'll see. But it, um, I've got a lot of little kids that uh, I love, and I think they love me. I'm pretty positive they do because they come running. T, T, Uncle T. That's what they call me. So it, we have uh, Bible studies at our house and, you know, just small groups and stuff like that, and all these little kids come through. And they all will run up at some time while I'm teaching. And you can ask anybody in our group. I will stop and talk to them just like they're the most important thing in the world at that moment, no matter what they're doing, because they're not interrupting. They're important to me. Just like Jesus did the same thing, that's how we can come to the Father, okay? And we don't do that. I think, I think we miss that a lot. I really do. I think we come tentatively. I think we come uh, like we're, we're not worthy to come. I remember during my time, during that 2013, 14, I didn't think I was worthy to come. And I thought everything that I got, I deserved it. Everything. It didn't matter. I quit my job. You know, I was having to work hard work. I worked at UPS, which is really hard work. If you've never worked there, let me tell you, it's hard. Uh, heavy equipment, doing it, hurt my back doing it even. Um, praise God. He broke me. Thank you. And, um, but he, he showed me that I can come. I'm okay. He's forgiven me. He's working through me. He's transforming me. I can come boldly. Next, I'm no longer a slave, but an heir of Christ. Let me read you some verses. I'm no, well, first, I'm no longer a slave, but an heir of Christ. I know you're writing these things down. I apologize. I'm no longer a slave. I'm an heir of Christ. Think about this. You know this song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Right? Because I am a child of God. Guess what? That's scripture. Let me show you. Because some of you think, I think sometimes you think we're just singing these songs and you're like, oh, that's neat. That's scripture. It's more than neat. It's awesome. It's powerful, right? So think about this. Um, 
Romans 8, 2 says, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So he's freed you. But then I'm going to move into Romans 6, 6, and it says, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power, which is awesome, in our lives, and we are no longer slaves to sin. Oh, wait, is that the exact line I said? Yeah. No longer slaves. Yeah, oh, that is. That's the exact, exact same line. Weird. Hmm. Who knew? Who knew, right? Who knew it's scriptural? Galatians 4, 7. Now you are no longer slave. Yeah, you got it. You see, yeah, you're seeing it, right? But we're God's own child. We are his children. And since you're his child, since you're his child, God has made you his heir. So you're not only just a child, but you're an heir. So does that mean that everything he has, I get? Yeah, it does. I'm not talking monetary. He's got that for, for weeks. That's nothing. Monetary with him is nothing. He doesn't care about that. But he blesses me constantly because I'm his heir. I'm no longer bound. Romans 8, 17, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of his glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Nobody wanted me to put that one up there, right? Because you don't want to see that part. You're like, hey, the good, the good part was the first part. Let's just do the A. You know, you know yeah, for those of you that are Bible readers, you know what A is. Um, but B is important. Because in order to share in his glory, we have to share in his suffering. And part of the things that he takes us through is suffering. So it's not all perfect. We get to worship here freely today. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's incredible what we get to do here in this country. There are brothers and sisters around this world that don't have that freedom. So let's walk as heirs of Christ. Let's walk as heirs of Christ. Let's look at John 15, 15, because this takes it a, a step further. It says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my what? Whoa. I am a friend of God. You know that song? I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Didn't know it was scriptural, did you? You did. You just didn't know it. You just don't have it in here. You are his friend. You're not only his heir, you're his friend. And he says, since I have told you everything the Father has told me. So as the Father told him, he has passed down to us his word. He's given us everything. And he doesn't want us to be bound by sin anymore. We're no longer slaves to it. But do, how many of us feel like we walk around sometimes bound? Huh? Oh, raise your hands for crying in the night. You're, you're lying. You're lying here. You just are bound by a lie right now. Speak truth. You know that. You walk around with this and this. The enemy hits you. We're no longer slaves. No longer. Next, I've been set free in Christ. Galatians 5, 1, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery to the law. You know what the law was for? The law was to say their sin, right? But it also did this cool thing. Uh, John, John Piper is just watching some John Piper and listening to him speak on this. And this is back in 83. So he's so ahead of his time. He's crazy. The guy's brilliant. But he said, the law kind of is from Moses to Jesus it was it was about a stirring and it was stirring up all the sense so you could see it and you're you're like there's no way to escape it right because the law was never meant to save us from the sin Jesus was and Jesus came to fulfill the law so he came and he said I will be the sacrifice for all and I'll redeem you and I'm going to set you free Let's uh, see. 
whom the sun sets free oh is free indeed and what's it say i'm a child of god yes i am right scripture scripture so good i have been accepted not condemned in christ i've been accepted not condemned in christ this verse you know probably like the back of your hand what is it going to be what am i going to tell you is it romans 8 1 what is it what's romans 8 1 so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to christ jesus right you you know this you know this but we don't we don't walk in that we've been accepted I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You're for me, not against me. We've been accepted by Jesus. He's enough. It's enough. And yet we walk in this, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. We walk in bondage is what we do. I didn't know that I was in bondage. But I was in bondage to so many things from the past that I just was like unaware. And then when I moved to Sacramento and just got enveloped by it, I realized I needed to be set free. You know, it wasn't that I didn't know him. I would have gone to heaven had I passed away. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with me not walking in who I was called to be. I'm a child of God. Act like it. Walk in freedom. Walk in freedom. And that's what he did. When I chose to walk in freedom, guess what? I'm here. I get to share my story with you. My good and my bad. Because I don't care about my bad. Because he used my bad to change me and make me so much better. <laughs> because it's Jesus through me. Right? We all have bad. So we just try to hide it so much that we get scared. And, and there's nothing to be scared of. Because he set us free. Let's look at... This next one says, I've been raised up and seated in heavenly places with Christ. I've been raised up and seated in heavenly places with Christ. So he's taking me through this journey, right? And he's raised, he's actually, not only is he drawing me in, not only am I no longer a slave to sin, I'm an heir, but I'm his friend, but he's also raising me up to be with Christ. Colossians 3, 1 says, since you've been raised to new life with Christ, Set your sights on the realities of heaven where God sits at the, right, at the place of honor at God's right hand. Our focus is to be on Jesus. And with that, we're raised up with him. Let's look at Ephesians 2, 6. It says this, For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are, once again, what's that word? United. We're united with Christ. It's more than just, I accept you, done. Go about and do your business, right? And you're, Woo, hey, I'm good. No, it's mo way more than that. We're actually grafted into the vine, actually, he talks about. I had 20 pages of this to go through. Got it down to eight. It was really hard to narrow those down, right? Colossians 3, 4. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. So with that uniting, we get to reveal him to others, right? So it's, it's awesome. So, that, so, so with us being raised up, we point to Christ. We still point to Christ. Even he raises us up, but we still are pointing, saying he's the one. It's about him. It's not about me. And then finally, I have every spiritual gift, every spiritual blessing in Christ, every spiritual blessing. Yes, I had to find something that would include everything else that I wanted you to know. And this one covers it all. So if you have a question, do you mean this? Yes. Yes, I do. What about that? Yes, that too. Because it says... All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are what? 
It's so much more than just Jesus, thank you for being my Savior. He's doing some amazing things in our lives and we don't, we miss it. Ephesians 2, 6, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. And Christ, who is your life, Colossians 3, 4, Colossians, uh, or in Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world. You will share in his glory. Sorry, I jumped up. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with Christ. So we, we are made right with him. Every spiritual blessing is included in that. Every one. Colossians 2.10, so you are complete through your union or you are united. These are, these are, it's crucial that you go away from here saying, I am united with Christ. And it's so much more than just a ticket to heaven. So much more. He's not just put us here with this information so that we have this ticket to heaven. No. We're complete. And he's the head and ruler of us all. We're complete in him. So my, my question is real simple for today. Real simple. Is your identity defined by the things you do? Or who you are in Christ? When I started the story, my, my, my story in the beginning, I was consumed with the things that I could do. Everybody said, good job. Pat me on the back, lifting me up. You're awesome. Things are changing. People are growing, booming services all this stuff bringing in all this cool things all this junk didn't matter it was about me but jesus said no 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 i got a better plan for you child and he taught me about who my identity is truly what it truly is and that is i'm united with christ and if i can walk through those things if I can walk back through, you know, I've been, I'm alive in Christ. I'm brought near to Christ. I can come boldly. I'm no longer a slave. I'm an heir. I'm also a friend. I've been set free. I'm accepted, not condemned. I'm raised and seated in heavenly places with Christ. And I have every spiritual blessing. If I can jump to that, if I can recognize that, then I'm going to walk out in what he wants me to do each and every day, each and every moment. Why? Because my eyes are on me. Because it's Jesus doing it. It's Jesus doing it. It's not you. We're not. How many think we can get to heaven on our own? Anybody here? There's no way. You probably sinned in the first few minutes you were up. Because somebody said something wrong to you. You know what I mean? Rubbed you the wrong way. and you. Who, who knows? Sin sin it's, it's it's there but jesus has redeemed us from that right so as we step into this i want you to i want you to think who are you in christ what does he say you are he's speaking to you today you don't need me to tell you what is who does he say you are who does he say you are and do you believe that? And then are you going to walk in it? Right? Let's bow our heads. Jesus, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for caring about us. Thank you for showing us who you are. Thank you for allowing us to be consumed by you. We want to be united with you. We want to walk in the truths of your word that say, I'm a child of God. we're worthless without you but with you we're heirs heirs of God children of God may we walk like that